All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Deanna Paul, uh, President and CEO of the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, and this is our Small Business uh, Solution Series workshop. Um, and we're excited today to have a business throwdown. So, um, which sounds probably more physical um, than it's going to be, but um, we will have, a, I think, a knockdown drag out over the things that we're contemplating. One of the most important things we're contemplating these days, um, online versus in-person events. And Scott, as I understand it, you are going to be the ringmaster, um, also known as the moderator of this business throwdown. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Scott, to introduce our opponents. <laughs> Deanna, I love, I love the ringmaster part. So that's great, yeah, so I'm Scott Smith. And I am the moderator and referee for the Business Builder Throwdown, which is a weekly active discussion between Holly Jean Jackson, your holistic business coach, and Matt Rouse of Hook SEO and All Around Good Guy. And every week they debate the different sides of two items. And so today, online events or virtual events. With that, we'll uh, we'll have Holly. Well, I think you meant online events versus Susie. in person events, Susie. but that's okay. Online, <laughs> on ground, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, virtual versus on ground, online All versus right. on ground. There we go. First right. point goes to Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay. All right, I'm already Ding ahead. Ding. All right, the so, judges are weighing in. I love it. Yeah, this is great. Um, I like the ringleader too. So, um, all right. So I am Holly Jean Jackson. I'm your holistic business coach and one of the opponents. I today I'm taking the side of in-person events and <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's time to get back in person, get back face to face. And I guess a really quick introduction because this is not our traditional throwdown. Um, I work with business owners on their marketing, their strategy and their technology. And specifically, I specialize in helping health and wellness business owners. All right, thanks. All right, Scott. Holly, you've got the uh, in-person <laughs> events and I'm ready for the in-person events. You are events. ready, I love it. All right, <laughs> all right, Matt. Come so on I am now. Matt, Matt Rouse. I run Hook SEO Digital Marketing in the United States and Hook Digital Marketing Canada, as well as I am the host of the Digital Marketing Masters podcast, one of the hosts of the Business Builder Throwdown, which is what we're doing right now, and also one of the hosts of the Seven Minute Jabs podcast, and author of Crush SEO, Flattening the Hamster Wheel, and Start Saying Yes, and also someone who has done many, many, many online events, like the online event we're all enjoying today. So Ooh. online events is the side I will be taking today. <laughs> all right. So Deanna, I know that you guys have done for years in-person events, but with, uh, with the change of the world last March, a year and a half ago, uh, online events became much more prominent and some people did them very well. Some people didn't want to do them. What, uh, what did the chamber do? How did you guys, uh, cope? Well, we, um, pivoted my worst word ever, um, pivoted, uh, to all, virtually all, all online. And I think we did it, um, as gracefully as possible. And, and we're actually, as we're contemplating, you know, we're just in the middle of moving forward in 2022 and putting a budget together for 2022. Um, and so we've, we're doing all of our signature events will be held in person. However, we do have um, some events that we're keeping completely virtual um, because I believe that you, you've got to have a, bit, a foot in both of those worlds these days. Um, I don't think you can go now completely back to what was normal and consider that the new normal. There's nothing new about going backwards. It's got to be, a, it's going to be a combination act. Um, and so I'm interested to hear um, from both of these folks in terms of, you know, thinking about that also in terms of how do you balance that? Um, 
and uh, and make sure that you're creating that experience that everybody wants when they participate in an event. I love it. I love it. And apparently, Deanna knows the secret, the very <laughs> not so hidden secret of the Business Builder Throwdown in that we like the word and. So it's and. It's always an and. Hey, maybe uh, before we move into uh, in the first round of jabs here, and Matt, we'll let you have the first. Uh, we'll let you have the first go around here. Maybe we can get a response from somebody here. Kevin, Abby, Jake. Sure. What do you want Who me to would like to say? <laughs> Kevin, go ahead. Um, well, Dale Carnegie's been around for you know 109 years, and we've done it. of him. And uh, we moved to virtual in January of, of 2019 and 2020. And so we've been doing virtual for 12 and a half years now, 13 years. And now we're actually merging the two, talking about Deanna. We're doing Dale Carnegie Anywhere, where we can have participants in a classroom and online and combining the two together. So those that want to do it online can. Those that want to be in person can. So, but uh, right. I'm, I'm on the uh, side of Holly in person. <laughs> all right i love all right. it and all right so straddling little, both sides there their mask that's what we <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's go over matt open us up give us uh, your your opening round of jabs there sure so i think maybe um i would like to start with a uh quote i'm gonna have to paraphrase it a little bit because i didn't write it down but it was from the SBEC meeting where uh, someone you may know, Deanna Palm of the Washington County Chamber of Commerce said uh -oh. that their online events have been so successful that they cannot go back to only having in-person events. So the success of the online events is already obvious, right? And I think any organization that has had online events um, they may have had, you know, uh, some some technical hurdles to get over at the start, but I think people are now used to the technology, right? Like two years ago, when I would ask somebody, you know, if they want to get on a Zoom call or something, half the time I had to explain what Zoom was, and now you don't have to do that anymore, right? People understand, um, you know, video conferencing when you watch you know, uh, like an old movie or something nowadays, and, and, and they're bringing people up on video chat. It doesn't seem futuristic anymore. It actually seems dated. Uh, it's just a thing now, right? It's the way the world is. So the nice part about online events, and, and there are three things about it that I really want to hit as a kind of part of my first point here. And the first thing is you want to get people to register for your event because when they register, you get their email, right? And then they come to your online event, which you can do without having to leave your office or, or your home office or wherever that is, right? You don't have to go, you don't have to get a bunch of drinks and snacks and stuff. You don't gotta worry if, you know, if Bob's allergic to peanuts or if Janet doesn't have a vegetarian option, right? You have your online event. And then because you got their email when they registered, you can then follow up with them. You can also use that in some cases, depending upon the event, you can use that to have some sort of a drip campaign where you send them emails over time, or you can offer them to come to other events that you have. You can even use that to invite them to an in-person event if you're going to have one. So the ability to get people's contact and registry information and then follow up and do it automatically is a really powerful thing about online events. So I love the way you you had one point, but you got three points in there. Way to go, Matt. You're just uh, coming out fast and furious. In full disclosure, in 2016, I gave a talk uh, called The Psychology and Physiology of Relationships, where I took academic research and proved that the relationships that we create online can be just as strong as those that we create uh, face to face. But... There are some advantages to face-to-face. -to -face. Now, Matt, I love that we can capture emails uh, when we have people register, but uh, as Douglas Adams says, technology is what we call things that don't work yet. 
And uh, sometimes there's some barriers that we don't have in face-to-face -face events. And Holly, we can gather emails different ways when uh, people come face-to-face. -face. I often say, uh, go to the chamber and win wine because we'll put uh, business cards into uh, a hat and draw uh, prizes. And so go to chamber, win wine. Can't really do that uh, online. Holly. Yeah, so my first round is going to be purely focused on connection. Yes, I'm sure you can connect online. I've actually never met Scott or Matt face to face. So I'll put that out there. But we are in an age of we cannot really replicate this whole water cooler thing well online. So you can't really have those sidebar conversations as well online in a large event as you can in person. And because we're facing so much extreme isolation and the research shows that when we're isolated as humans, we need that connection. We're built for connection. We were built to live in circles and amongst tribes. And in this grand experiment during this pandemic, people are getting Zoom fatigue. They're tired of being online. As a speaker, I'm tired of doing this. Like I'd prefer to be on a stage, walking around, connecting with the energy in the room. Behind your computer, I have no idea what you are feeling right now. It's hard to see what the crowd is feeling. I can't see when people are leaning in. Exactly. Kevin's like, I, I hear you. And, and so it's not the same energy. It's not the same vibe. It's not the same level of connection. It's more difficult to build trust and like ability and connection when we're on a computer screen versus face to face. There's more you can see with body language and just literally feeling the energy of that person. Are they being authentic? Is something you know off about them? You can see that much better face to face. And I think what the world is craving today, and we know the mastermind we're building, business owners are craving connection face to face. I'm reading a book right now called Belong, and they've done research on this disconnection and how, sure, it's great to have these online connections, but if you don't also create space for real life, face-to-face -face people you have in your life on a regular basis, you are missing out and you're going to be combat combating things like depression at an exponential rate. Suicide rates are higher when you don't have people you connect with face-to-face -face on a regular basis. And I know this is about events online or offline, but I am really deeply concerned about our society continuing to go down this route of people working remotely and doing events remotely when we desperately need face-to-face -face connection. Well, we know that uh, people live longer, happier, healthier lives, research says. When you have a good network, I'd like to hear uh, from someone else in, uh, in the crowd about some of their experience with things like Zoom fatigue, uh, but also the convenience of being able to just walk in to a, um, into a, a virtual meeting and connect to a lot of people. And uh, one of the things that people tend to do is they hide sometimes in those <laughs> virtual meetings. That was a great example. So maybe Abby, Jake, uh, tell us, uh, what are your thoughts? Abby, go ahead. Sure, as far as online, and in person, I'm 50-50 because I see the points of both. Um, it is difficult to get to know, like Holly said, to, to have those conversations one-on-one -on -one with people. Whereas an in-person chamber event, for instance, you can be aside and, and get to know that person. And it is hard. I understand people have to be off screen at times because of situations, but you don't get to see them and they, it's just different having them on screen and, and seeing like Holly said, their reactions. However, it's so convenient and there are several uh, events that I wouldn't have been able to attend in person. So I'm so 50, 50 on this. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's very true. And Matt, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, the attendance levels. Jeremy, uh, did you reach. have something you wanted to ask? Uh, yeah, I was just going to oh, maybe Jeremy. piggyback on that. And, howdy. Um, yeah, I was going to piggyback on that and say for, um, for I could give a couple of examples where I think it definitely depends on the type of event. So for us, the in the in store events that we have usually are hosting an artist of some kind. And so there's there's a couple of situations where um, somebody may prefer one or the other. The 
Um, and we've actually, we've kind of done both for a long time because anytime we have an artist in, if we can handle it, we'll, we'll live stream the event the same time that we host it in store. But, um, uh, you know, so on the one side, nobody will say they went to a Zoom meeting and got to meet their favorite guitar player. They want to go to the store, to the event, stand there, you know, they'll stand next to their favorite musician and take a picture and say they got to meet him and get a picture. They don't stay, take, you know, screenshots and say, I was in a Zoom call with this person. It's not the same thing, right? On the flip side, they also, if they can't attend that thing, because most of our in-store events are prior to a concert, somebody's got sound check at three and the gigs at seven. So the in-store is like noon when on a Tuesday, right? When most people are at work or something. So being able to watch the live stream and participate that way, um, you know, gives them, gives them an alternate, you know, an, another option, a way to participate that they couldn't do if it was only in person. And the same is true for our lessons. They're in person and, and that one-on-one that -on -one be in the same room, playing an instrument at the same time with somebody is irreplaceable for a lesson, unless you get test positive for COVID and have to quarantine for 14 days, at which point do I just not get to learn anything for two weeks mm -hmm. or can I take a Zoom lesson and still learn something in that time? So um, it just, it, it highly depends on, you know, what, is it an alternative or replacement for one or the other? Probably not, but it's a, it definitely is an, an additional choice, um, you know, either way. And so, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm an and in both. <laughs> person. All right, Jeremy, you you are the the perfect person for the throwdown. <laughs> Good points there, Matt. Let's talk. The gauntlet about has it. been dropped. That's right. That's a vote for Scott, I guess, to be in the middle. <laughs> so I something that I don't think has been touched on about online events that is probably the most powerful thing about online events. And Holly kind of briefly mentioned it in her introduction that Holly and I have never met in person. And the most powerful thing is that you can have people from literally anywhere on your meeting if it's appropriate to the event that you're doing. So you're no longer limited to how quickly somebody can walk or drive or ride their bike or whatever it is to get to your event, right? So especially if it's an event that's kind of a regular thing, it's not like a, a three-day conference where you're going to go get a hotel room and you're going to fly there and do yada, yada, yada. If it's something like this meeting, for example, there is no reason that people from all over the country couldn't show up or all over Oregon or all of Washington County. You would be hard pressed to get someone to drive from the southeastern point of Washington County to get, you know, up the traffic on 217 to get over to Hillsboro to go to the chamber for an event and get back unless they want to spend an extra two hours out of their day, right? Not including the time to be at the event. So it gives you uh, an advantage in um, targeting for your advertising and your marketing as well. So if you're trying to find, say, people in the chiropractic industry, to come to an event, it's difficult to find 20 chiropractors within a 10 minute drive, but it's not difficult to find 200 chiropractors in all of Oregon, right? And so, so the access there um, to people all over, and it's really highlighted by a networking group that uh, Scott Smith runs called the Global Tea Break. The Global Tea Break is just like it sounds. It's people from all over the world having tea and networking together. And that is something that is not possible as an in-person event. So online events give you the option to have a global audience. So we've got a pretty big reach when you have the uh, virtual events. Kevin, you're raising your hand there. Yeah, and to Matt's, and sorry, Holly, I'm gonna go mad on this one. <laughs> um, no you know, online events. Um, they can be as interactive and engaging as an in-person event because a lot of people don't know use how to use the format. You know, we do have breakout rooms. You can set up breakout rooms where people can go into those on their own and talk. So if two Holly and Matt want to go into a breakout room, leave the rest of us to talk, they can go up into a breakout room. 
You can have people put things in chats. You can have them, you know, right on the um, screen, you know, annotate and stuff. So you can make it just as interactive and engaging as you do in person. So I have to agree with a little bit on Matt on that point. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kevin, I love it. I love it. So Holly, one of the things that happens when we meet face to face, we shake hands, uh, we embrace, we have a, there's physical contact and that helps uh, the release of oxytocin, which is often called the trust molecule, helps us uh, bond together. So let's, let's go back into your court with uh, face to face live in-person events. Yeah. So another reason that I'm advocating for face-to-face -face events is people show up differently when they're in real life and face-to-face. -face. For example, I have no idea what you guys are wearing below the waist. You might be wearing slippers or pajama pants for all I know, but when you show up face-to-face, -face, you put more thought into how you show up in your appearance. You are not likely to be playing on your phone when you're in an at live, a live event face-to-face -face, versus if you're on Zoom, it's, it's difficult for me to see if you're distracted. And so I would say that it's easier to lose your audience and for people to be distracted and think that they can multitask, which we all know is not something that you can really do effectively as a human, and it actually drains your brain. And so I think part of why people are getting Zoom fatigue is because they think they can work and be on these meetings and they're not as engaged. And sure, you can make your talk as engaging as possible. And I think we're really good at doing that. And we, because we all have background in technology, we understand how to do that on the platform, but the difference is, is that when you're face to face, I believe because you can read the room, there are things you can do. The engagement is different. I think it's deeper. I think there's more trust. There's more credibility. And because of that, if, for example, you are selling something from stage, whether it's getting them on your email list, getting them into a program, getting them to buy your book, getting them to become a client, whatever that is your conversion rate is always going to be higher in person face to face because people can see you, they can feel you, they can shake hands with you. They can have that sidebar conversation much more easily. And it's different when you've shaken hands with somebody or you've done the elbow bump, things are different these days, whatever that is, it's a different experience. And somebody who's been trained for using stages to scale your business, I've done the virtual event thing. The conversion rate is low. And people that even have experience running these events on good platforms and you ask them the right questions before you commit to doing their program, people are not as engaged. A lot of people say that they're going to be there, but they don't show up. They don't watch the replay. And so I've done both of these. And I will say that it's more worthwhile for my investment, for what I'm trying to do to grow my business with events, to do it face-to-face -face versus doing it online. I have not seen the numbers convert nearly as high or be nearly as beneficial as doing a live event in person. All right, I'm gonna send each of our contestants into a neutral corner for the moment. So Holly, you just kind of hang out over there uh, with your whole brain draining thing and uh, Matt, <laughs> You go back into your into your corner. I'll take a moment and say thank you to Deanna and the Washington Chamber of Commerce for hosting this special business builder throwdown. We are very happy to be here with you. And I want to give uh, Deanna a moment as well to kind of talk about uh, the events and, and things that are coming up and how uh, live events and how online events are going to further the mission of the chamber. Thanks for, for that, Scott. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. I've got this, um, you know, eight and a half by 11 tablet in front of me. And I actually think that, you know, you should put a line down the middle of it and then, you know, ad identify your events and virtual or in person. And you should figure out which format's going to work best for the event and the experience. Um, I'm sure like you all, we have experienced over the past year and a half events that had no place, no business being virtual, right? It was like, that was never going to work, folks. Don't do it. Um, and and I understand why they did. Um, a lot of them were nonprofits, right? We all have these nonprofits um, in our communities that, you know, live and die by their big event. And it's their big acts, Right. Um, and so, you know, it's the paddle race for, you know, the one big thing that they want to secure funding for next year. And 
those were tough, right? Those are tough in, in a virtual format. Um, people were putting in their pledges in chat right? Um, I'd love to go back and, uh, and ask the nonprofits, so how much of that did you actually collect? Or was it this peer pressure um, that you typed in and said, I'll give a hundred bucks. And then afterwards, you know, your spouse who's here, who heard, what, a hundred bucks? I'm not giving a hundred bucks, right? We're simply not doing that. Um, and you just hope they didn't save the chat. Um, so I think that, you know, you have to really look at the event and, and determine what your customer really would be wanting and expecting. Um, and as Matt mentioned, you know, we, we are in the Portland metropolitan region. And so if we have folks and customers that are coming from, you know, uh, the east side of the tunnel, uh, then I know that it better be a pardon me, darn good, damn good event to, to have them traverse through the traffic that they're going to traverse to get here. Um, and, and so that's, that's a pressure, right? It's a new pressure on our organization is to really be thoughtful about what effort somebody now has gone to um, when you're only doing an in-person event, right? You're going to make sure that somebody's getting out of those pajama pants. They're putting the slippers back in the closet they're, you know, donning their dark sunglasses. If you're like Matt, who hasn't been outside for the past 75 years, um, <laughs> right? And so, you know, but you had that now there's an expectation. So the new normal is that really defining, in, in my mind, at least it's defining, you know, everything we do is going to be contemplated differently. And if we're going to do something in person, you know, that experience has to be exemplary. So we have to push ourselves to then make sure that we're doing, that we're coming up with the outcome of it's, it was worth it, right? It was worth it to go through that process. Um, and even gas prices are up high now. So you're also telling somebody it's going to cost you a little bit more, not only in time, but in gas and effort. Um, and so you have to make those things um, really you have to contemplate what you're going to do differently so that they're, when they come, that experience is like, well, dang, I'm sure glad that I did that. And then the events that you hold virtually, you know, have to be consistent. And I think it has to be, well, you know, that did give me the kinds of things that Holly's missing, right? How do we as an organization um, listen to what Holly's saying about the things that are important about meeting in person. And if we're not providing an in-person component, how do we make sure that, you know, it is a, a return on the investment, right? So how do we make sure that, um, you know, if Holly is our featured speaker virtually, that folks know who she is and she's able to make contacts and connections and to, to grow her business. So I think it's really understanding what the two worlds do and bring to and what your customers' expectations are. And then you better figure out a way to make sure you're responding to those items. It, when everybody was virtual, the bar was pretty low, right? We're all stumbling through this and we're, we're doing the best we can. And everybody was really sort of gracious, right? But now once it starts opening up and you make a determination, that we're going to stay virtual, then that you have to make that an experience that um, where they're getting their tank filled for the things that are important to them. So Deanna, this is great. Uh, I just want to check time. How are we doing on time? How much? How much You've do got, we have? We go. We go from ten to eleven. You've got thirty. That's more perfect minutes. because right. uh, often their neutral corners. I noticed that Holly was uh, taking some refreshing ice water, a little protein bar. Uh, Matt, on the other hand, was having a Coke and a Snickers, but they are uh, ready to come out fighting. And uh, so let's go over to Matt. What? Oh, hold on. There you let's go. go over to Matt. What kinds <laughs> of, yeah, I got the Matrix glasses going here, so watch out. <laughs> and that's for Matt in the virtual world over there uh, with his beautiful background. Matt, what kinds of events are perfect for online events oh my god primarily. i, I think, love it matt <laughs> everybody really likes to think about online events as zoom calls in online events the majority of online events that have more than like 20 or 30 people 
are usually done in a different format. They are either done with something like Cvent, which is for online trade shows, or something like a virtual summit is, is a very common online event. I participated in several virtual summits. Um, one of them was about self-publishing, uh, and I did also did three business building ones um, last year. Each of those summits had more than a thousand people in watching, and you know they have several speakers. One of them was actually over three days. Um, so these larger scale events can have a lot of people that come in, and the draw is the speakers for the event. So you don't have to come up with another reason to try and get somebody to come to your event. You know, you don't have to be like, I'm going to build this page on my website and write some kind of downloadable thing to get them interested and then put them in like a drip campaign and teach them how to do this thing. And, and whatever, you just be like, do you want to see these speakers? You can see them online. If you can't come at the time, spend 29 bucks and get the recording. Right. And so there's a couple things there. One thing to unpack is the scale. So you can have literally, you can be a tiny or a, even a single person organization and have thousands of people at an event. Number two is being able to record the event. So just like we're recording this right now, you can record it so that people who are busy or don't have time to watch it right now or whatever, they can watch it later. And another part of that recording piece is you could cut uh, pieces out of that to use for other content that you have, like your social media, put it on your YouTube channel, things like that. And kind of the last thing about that is with something like a uh, trade show format, you can have things kind of like uh, Kevin had mentioned where you have breakout rooms. A lot of the larger platforms will have like a lobby section where people can just go and chat with each other. They may have avatars where you can have a, a little person that represents who you are in the meeting space and you can physically walk around it. Um, there is 3D meeting spaces now that you can use if you have your Oculus glasses or something like that. Uh, it's pretty meta, you know, like the Facebook meta. But uh, there's, there's all flavors of these online events that you can go through and they can give you a different kind of experience and... Um, like I said before, the scale, the reach, and the ability to record are um, three of the reasons that I would take um, online events very seriously in my business. All right. So we got some great uh, opportunities here for online events, uh, larger scale events, different platforms, not just using Zoom. Uh, but Holly, let's talk about events that are more suited to face-to-face. -to -face. But although I'll say Rod's, uh, Rob Stratham at The Drunken Grape has somehow figured out how to do uh, virtual wine and beer tasting. So people are very creative, but what, are, what kind of events should we be doing in person? Well, first of all, if we go into this whole matrix and this meta world and we stop meeting face-to-face, we might as well look at Ready Player One and the Matrix and all these things as being real at this point. And to me, that's very concerning just not to go down the rabbit hole, but that's where I am right now. Kevin. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kevin. Uh, that's exactly, I mean, this is, this is crazy to me. So um, for me, in terms of the events that lend themselves best, in oh, look at this comment from Matt. <laughs> in terms of the events that lend themselves best to live in-person events, for example, I'm publishing my first book this January. So I'm trying to land as many in-person book readings and book signings as possible. And I'm trying to make this a win-win for the business owner to help them bring people in and we're co-marketing that. So it's a win to the community and they haven't had people do any of these for a year and a half. So they're actually really excited and looking forward to having this. There's not a lot of competition right now for that, which is great. So there, that's one example. Another example is, for example, if you're using speaking as a way to grow your business, if you can get to a big conference and they already have a large, a large audience that's built in and it's more than one day conference, for example, those stages are not very well suited online. 
I actually was asked recently to be a coach for a conference for two days. And I was like, I'm not going to sit for 16 hours on zoom and coach for a nominal amount of money. Like that sounds like a nightmare to me. And if that sounds like a nightmare for me being paid to attend this, why would I pay for something that's <laughs> 16 hours on zoom? Even if you're amazing, I'm sorry. Like I, I can't sit behind a computer for 16 hours to hear a speaker. People show up differently face to face. People are more willing to buy your stuff face to face. They're more excited to learn more about your story. People are more engaged and more present face to face. And I can't disagree that there are not times and moments and specific events that lend themselves well to Zoom calls. I think um, you know, small chamber events and BNI meetings, they're great for doing Zoom calls. But there are certain circumstances where to me, it's not worth it as a speaker. I have done so many virtual conferences. I am extremely selective when I say yes to a virtual conference. I ask at least 20 questions. I'm not exaggerating before I accept that conference because it's a lot of work on my end and I have to make sure it's actually going to be a benefit and a win-win. And it's exhausting. Like when you are speaking, if you do any speaking, um, for me, at least I put 110% into it. And so after a speaking engagement, I need time to come down from that and to recoup and restore myself from that. And for me, it's less draining when it's face to face, because then you can feel the energy of the crowd. You can see the direct benefit. And I don't feel like I get that as much online. Well, my, myself being a, a true ambivert, uh, I need people and I need to be alone. I need to, to, to charge up in both ways. I have missed the in-person events and I'm grateful for the ones that I've been to recently. Uh, but I also appreciate the 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 uh, larger scale uh, conferences. I was uh, a speaker at a two week long conference that couldn't have happened in any other way uh, than virtual. But I'd like to hear from some of the folks here, which events uh, worked well online and which ones do you think kind of like Deanna was talking about, were just kind of a dud. Who would like to uh, jump in on this one jake Jeremy, abby. kevin abby, abby go ahead i've attended nab the national association of broadcasters for many years in person in las vegas in the past few weeks i attended nab online for the first time and adobe max they were both incredibly amazing and i got to interact with people i made so many new networking connections and got to actually engage with, speak with uh, some of the speakers whom I've looked up to for years. I never would have gotten to do that in person at NAB because for one thing, it, they're so crowded. You're in a room packed with people. We had to ask questions virtually constantly and chat constantly. And the, the interaction I got in all the years I've been never like this. So I was actually surprised that virtual turned out really, really well for both of those events. Yeah. Look at Matt smiling over there. He's just happy to hear that. Kevin. Our company every year does a annual convention. It's usually international one year and then worldwide. Um, so this year is worldwide and we have more people attending because it's online. And so, you know, there's opportunities to have social rooms and all that stuff. But however, we miss the actual social time with other people across the world, you know, going to have a drink, going out to eat, you know, and meeting people face to face and talking. So, you know, I talked to Holly and I want to throw one other thing out because Holly mentioned this Zoom fatigue. Um, one of our organizations that does a lot of uh, business with us, they're fatigued because they have 37 meetings a week now versus they only had three. So I think that the more people you know, we'll sign up for a Zoom event or an online event and they go, hey, yeah, okay, if I can make it, I'll be there. And they forget it and they don't show up versus if they have to go there, they say, oh, well, I can't do that. So I'm kind of, you know, it's 50-50. You get a better turnout in person because they're committed to coming. So. Yeah, those uh, serendipitous uh, meetings are hard to do. It's hard to have a side conversation in a, in a Zoom meeting unless you're in another virtual platform that allows for that, uh, like Matt mentioned. 
Uh, it's hard to get that uh, opportunity where you're just sitting at the at the table. I was at a trade show, my first trade show since the since the lockdown in July, and sitting at the at the table. I had some of the best conversations. It took me an hour and a half to uh, before I could leave that table because uh, I had some great just opportunistic conversations going on. So Holly, let's go back to the to the face to face events. What are some of the other benefits that we get? Well, I mean, for example, I went to this conference years ago before I knew who Amy Porterfield was and I met her and we were talking for 10 minutes. And then this guy that I knew was like, you know who that was, right? And I was like, no, who is it? She's like, Amy Porterfield. I'm like, who's Amy Porterfield? And then she gets up on stage and I'm like, holy mackerel. Um, <laughs> she just like knocks it out of the park. But the thing is, is that for me in-person events like that are so memorable. So we talked about at our mastermind recently, super thinking, I learned that from Amy Porterfield and it was memorable because I met her before I knew who she was. And we had that personal connection and she's just a regular person that transformed my perspective of looking at speakers in a very different way. So for me, when I go to live in-person events, I remember things differently because I show up differently. I I'm there. And like, when I sign up for these live conference events online, I'll sign up with the intention to show up. But then when my calendar gets booked up with clients, I'm going to take that over that. And then I'm not showing up and I'm not looking at the recordings. I don't have time to watch these recordings. And so to me, it's, it's just a different way of showing up and being present. And it's, it's not something we will ever be able to replicate online. And the day we can, I don't want to be on this earth anymore. Cause that's crazy. But there's the serendipity pieces of this, the connection, all those things. To me, that is what makes an amazing live event. And it's, it's having those tiny coincidences of small degrees of separation. So that Adobe conference, one of my good friends in California, he's the reason you had such an amazing event. He put all of the technology, he managed that entire program and it took him months to get that ready. So I'm glad that that went smoothly. I'll let him know you said that. Um, but the world is a small place and it's amazing when you meet face to face and you discover that. And I just, some of the most memorable experiences that changed my life, seeing Sean Stevenson on stage before he passed away, hearing his message and seeing his story in a very different way face to face is not the same thing as seeing him online or seeing a video. Like you just can't replace that ever. There's something fun about uh, dressing up and uh, going to an event making it a, a special time, separate time, and able to uh, separate myself from the day-to-day. -day. Matt, it turns out after uh, we end this meeting today that my dishes still need to be washed. So, <laughs> but let's, let's talk a little bit uh, about the uh, virtual events and some of those benefits of, of time and space. And uh, we'll start to wind this one down because uh, we are going to have to make a decision. Is it live? Is it recorded? <laughs> Is it Memorex? Which, what are we going to do, Matt? So Holly mentioned, you know, not having time to watch the recordings of a live event. You know, um, I went to three in-person marketing conferences, all of which I bought the recordings for and none of which I have watched. So that's not something that is, it is only happens with online events. It happens just as much if you get the recordings of an in-person event. Another thing that nobody has really mentioned is that because of the travel time involved to go to in-person events, you can actually go to more events and see more speakers and things if you do it online. And if you're trying to learn a lot in a short period of time, or if you have a very busy schedule, like most of us have, then being able to skip the commute or the travel time to go to those things is super valuable because you're getting that time back. The opportunity cost of what am I not doing in my business because I'm driving to go to an event or driving back from the event or I got to pick up a coffee on the way there. I got to get some lunch after or whatever it is. And now you're spending three hours to go to an event in your car. That could be three hours that you spent doing work. So I think there's an opportunity cost for events. That's important to think about. And I think the other thing with online events is 
if you think of an event like this one that we're doing right now is put on by the SBEC. I've been in Nova Scotia, Canada for a year and still been able to be in the Hillsborough SBEC to help them and help businesses there, even though I moved more than 3000 miles away. And you just can't do that in, you know, a strictly in-person meeting situation. And when you get a chance to, uh, to, to talk to Matt about his experience there in Nova Scotia, make sure you talk to him about his rooster that he has to do battle with. Um, <laughs> Richard the rooster. Richard the rooster. You want to find out about Richard the rooster. Uh, let's come back to, to Deanna. Go ahead. So, Scott, I just have a couple of, of points um, because yeah. I, I think that it's going to be, um, I think there's going to be a hybrid of these two things, right? And so I think it's really important for um, our audience to have a clear understanding around, you know, what what makes a good hybrid, right? And how do you um, engage both audiences um, as you're as you're navigating? And an example, I have a board planning session um, on Friday, and it's hybrid. I have a group of my board members that will um, be in our office here having a nice little continental breakfast and, and lunch. And then I have a group of board members that will be on Zoom engaging at the same time. And, you know, that, ta that takes um, an, an intentional process to ensure that the folks that are hanging out in Zoom feel a part of the conversation that's happening in the room. So what are the techniques and tricks and things that um, you should be thinking about if you're setting up a meeting that is partially in person and partially online. That's great, Holly. Let's uh, let's yeah. bring that to you, and then right over to Matt. As as you were describing that earlier, Deanna, because I my background was working in Silicon Valley as a technology director, and so before COVID, we did hybrid events they are, I'm sad to say a nightmare. Like it is very, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like it's very difficult to make sure you have the right equipment and tools and technology so that, you know, when you're speaking, people are speaking in the right place. Like, so you have to have speakers all around the room that can actually hear all the people you want to make sure there's not more than one computer to give off this weird sound. Like there's all of these technical components and I'm not going to lie to you. Like it's, it's complicated to create a hybrid event that goes well, unless you're working at a technology and even a technology company, I was working at visa and i was working at um you know other companies that had huge technology departments and we couldn't get this right and this was like maybe five years ago um so i just there's quite a bit of an investment in technology it's stressful it's it can be very difficult um so if you can get the right equipment and all those things um, it's more about just making sure you have somebody moderating it well, and you're not just moderating the room, but you're moderating between somebody in the room. And then you're going to the chat to pull somebody in from zoom and going back and forth. You want to have screens around the room. So people that are engaging with people on zoom can see the other people. So it's to do this well, requires a lot of equipment and technology to be quite candid. Well, it's, I only think, my um... board. it's only my board. So no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> one one way that you can sort of um like kind of cheat the technology a bit with hybrid events is to have um like a moderator for the online section so you can have somebody who's like you know pointing the microphone at bob when he's speaking versus when you know ingrid's talking or something right or um you can also have it where they type in comments Right. And then they take the comments from people on, you know, your Zoom call or whatever and read them to the crowd, uh, you know, to the people who are in person. Uh, but, you know, like Holly said, it is not the best option. Um, you pretty much want to go either have an in person event or an online event or have an in person or online event that is broadcast to another audience but it's the interaction between the two worlds where the problem is, right? So if you yeah. have a board meeting, it's fine to have cameras and microphones so that people can watch it, but it's when those people are gonna try and make comments to be part of the conversation that it gets to be complicated. And All right, difficult. Deanna, you get the final word and then we're gonna make our decision. 
All right. Well, and I think the other, um, the last point I want to make, because it is now being talked about, is that the one thing that, um, you know, Zoom meetings and um, virtual meetings did do was it was kind of an equity equalizer, right? So you could have translation services set up in the room um, and you could, you know, and, and so if you didn't, if English wasn't your first, you know, your primary language, then you could um, make sure that you had translation services available um, and they could go to a room and hear the simultaneous um, translation of the of the content. And so, um, how are you going to accommodate that with in person events? How are you going to ensure that you're still welcoming an audience who may where English is not your primary language and and do that translation service that should have been done all along, but it really became prominent um, this past year and a half in terms of adding those services because it was easy to be able to do it um, because it was virtual and, the, and those were kind of built in. And so that I think is going to be another um, way to contemplate, you know, what, how you um, determine how and where your event is, is implemented is, are you creating, um, are you doing it with an equity lens? Well, Deanna, that's beautiful. I love that uh, you're considering what the needs are for your audience. And so we're going to wind down. Kevin, we'll give you, we'll give you a, a word here in just a moment. Uh, we're going to wind down. I just want to, again, thank uh, Deanna and Washington County, Washington County Chamber of Commerce for hosting this special edition of the Business Builder Throwdown. Kevin. Um, you know, there's all these companies that are doing online presentations, WebEx uh, training and meetings actually didn't advance their platform as much as all the other companies did because they were secretly working on the hybrid. And now they do have a package that does handle all those issues that Holly was talking about you know, on hybrids. And it is, it's a whole package. Our company is investing tons of money to implement that so that we can do hybrid meetings. So just right. for those guys that are doing that, it is coming. They're working on it. They fixed the problems. <laughs> all right, live events. Online events, which is going to, who is going to win? Holly Jean Jackson, your holistic business coach with live events or Matt Rouse with virtual events from Hook SEO. And today's winner, well, we always at the Business Builder Throwdown want to consider what is best for the business owners in our audience. And uh, Deanna, you nailed it. What does your audience need? And the truth is we need both live events and in-person events. We tell business owners only do what only you can do. Well, <laughs> you, you need to have events, uh, only have on ground events for uh, in things that you can only do in person. There are things that you can only do online. So the true answer is a dead tie today between Holly Jean Jackson and Matt Rouse. You have to do both. You cannot choose one or the other. You need to have both. Holly, you've got to jump out here in a moment, but you also want to mention something special about the Business Builder uh, program. Yeah, so I have to jump onto another call shortly, but I wanted to share with everybody here in case you're interested in this or you know somebody else who might be interested. We just launched our Business Builder Ninja Mastermind Community because we have heard that isolation is just really killing small to medium-sized business owners. And they're feeling really disconnected. They don't know exactly what they need to do next in their business. And because essentially creating this show, the live show that we have with the Business Builder Throwdown has created a mastermind amongst the three of us, we wanted to share that model and replicate that for other business owners by sharing them things we can teach in terms of how to grow their business and scale it to that next level, but also mastermind around the problems that they're facing. So they're, they're not alone, they're not isolated. And right now we have our Founders Day sale through the end of Thanksgiving in the US. So if you're listening now and you're not in the U.S., that will be um, November 25th is the last day of that sale. It's $67 to join, and that price will go up to a membership rate after that date. And so we're just really excited to share and help business owners be successful and grow. 
Um, this is primarily targeted towards health and wellness business owners, but really if there's anybody who's struggling in their business, we want to keep that open and help them so they don't feel alone. Perfect. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, thank you. Holly or Matt, go ahead, close it out and then we'll. I just wanted to say Indiana. working with, um, the SBC and, and the, uh, originally the Hillsborough chamber. Now the Washington County chamber of commerce has always been, um, a really excellent solution for our business, for networking, for events, to get the word out, um, about our company and, uh, participating in the events, whether they're online or they're in-person events is, just such a valuable addition um, to our business. And we've been uh, chamber members for over six years now. And uh, I just think that what Deanna and her staff do is just, uh, it's invaluable to businesses, especially, you know, in times like we've had for the last couple of years. Um, you know, some of the things that they've been able to do, like help businesses get access to funding and to grants and, and, and to other programs and employees and all of those things, um, and go out and, and go to bat in the political arena on behalf of our businesses is, is also super important because even though I moved and uh, my business is still, uh, located in Hillsborough. So, um, you know, it's super important for everybody. Please uh, support your uh, local chamber. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, and again, really nice to, to meet you, Scott, and nice to see you, Matt, again. And thank you for helping us um, put this uh, program together for our members. Uh, again, it's if they're not contemplating this issue um, today, they're probably a little behind schedule. I'll just say that. Um, this is going to be really important for our businesses to really have a determination as to where, you know, where their customers are at, where, you know, where are they going to meet their customers and, you know, and making sure that they're, that, that those two things are aligned. It's going to be really important um, for them to get to know their customers today um, because their customers have probably changed um, from, you know, February of 2020. If you would have had, you know, ask them then what they wanted, they would have been I want wine, I want cheese, I want the event, I want the networking, I want, you know, all of those things. Um, I don't think you're going to get that same response. I think, you know, well, if, I, if I'm going to come to your office, it better be something that's a true experience, right? And, and the stakes are higher now. You know, if you're going to tell somebody that, you know, the only way that they can participate is in person, then that in-person ex experience better be exemplary. And so, um, you know, again, we have to all contemplate what that's going to look like. Thank you so much uh, for participating. Really, truly appreciate it. And have a great rest of your week. See you, everybody. Nice to meet y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.